Good time of day, guys. My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 8, Matsuri Bayashi. It's been fucking 10 days I did the math since last episode. I am sorry, I missed four episodes or something. Like, how many will it have been? One, two, uh, three, four. Yeah, because this is going up on the 17th. The last episode was on the 7th, so, yeah, sorry about that, but shit happens. A lot of coincidences, a fucking heat wave, o only one day did I actually feel tired, like, I just didn't have fucking time a lot of these days, so, yeah, sorry about that. But anyways, last episode we completed four more fragments after discussing episode 11 of Sotsu, and now we've got two more episodes to discuss again, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. We did a red capsule, uh, which gave us some more insight into Rena's thoughts on being on uh, <coughs> normal pills. Uh, we did Rena Ryugu, which just showed her moving to the village, I guess. Uh, New Wind, which was Oreo being a nice old lady instead of batshit insane. And one, two, three, four, which was uh, borderline Takano threatening Tomatake to never say that. Hifumi's her grandfather, even though he's not, uh, but, well, biologically, it's familial, so it's still valid. I'm not going to tell a fictional character that you can't call another fictional gr character her grandfather, uh, so, yeah, we're gonna try to complete more fragments today, hopefully get to, like, four of them. I don't have much to say about these two episodes of Sotsu, but regardless... Um, I'm gonna be going out here and then pulling up the save menu to go into spoiler time for episode through episode 13 of Sotsu. So if you don't want spoilers, then feel free to mute. Otherwise, um, you'll probably be upset that you didn't. All right, welcome to spoiler time. I have like barely fucking anything to say about episode 12. So even if I had recorded, I probably had recorded in the last week before today because episode 13 aired today i probably wouldn't have said much anyways would have been like a 30 second spoiler time but now it's going to be more like three minutes so uh my general thoughts on episode 12 was that it felt a little pointless because all we really got was some pointless answers to nekodamashi like oh satako injected akasaka no shit. <laughs> but I will admit that Sat uh, the part about Satoko hiding the sword was kind of cool. Uh, however, I feel like there wasn't really any uh, indication that she did that it was hidden in Neko Damashi. It felt more just that it wasn't there. So I don't feel like that was set up all that well. But whatever, I'm not here to workshop Sotu's script. I'm here to give my thoughts. Uh, so aside from that, there was just the two extra moments with Hanyu, which was just set up. This whole episode just felt like set up, framed around some Neko Damashi answers that we really did not fully need other than the sword thing, which I'll admit is fine. So I won't hold that against the show. Too much, at least. So now episode 13. It was better. It still felt mostly like setup, but we got a, a lot of cool stuff and something that I do want to discuss, uh, which uh, did make me reflect a little bit on one thing that happened in episode 12, based on one thing that happened in episode 13, but we'll get to that in a minute. So we got some of Aoa's actual personality, and she's batshit insane, who would have fucking thought? But yeah, that, that was cool, seeing her interactions with Hanyu, her... More or less fucking torturing her. I, we still need more info on these two, without a doubt, but it's still interesting, so that's fine. I'm glad the episode seemed to mostly focus on Aoa and Hanyu, so that's good. I figured this arc would anyways, since it's called, you know, God Entertaining, but yeah. Uh, I am conflicted on Rika's having flashbacks to Tatari Damashi in particular, because on one hand, 
this is fucking stupid. On the other hand, it really fucking depends on whether or not she was actually fucking alive. So, if she was dead, then she shouldn't have these fucking memories, period, end of story. I trust Ryukichi enough to the point where this is not the answer, and that she actually was alive before Satoko shot her. And therefore, she actually saw these things, but forgot because she was near the brink of death. So, that would be a lot more believable. So, I hope that's actually the case, because I feel like it was kind of put vaguely, or it only implied that she was still alive. So, yeah, and if that's the case, then Jesus Christ, how is Keiichi better at one-shotting things with a baseball bat than Oishi is? Like, Christ. And then, there was that one little line, that one little line that Aoa said, that Veer lost her memories. That's kind of weird. Uh, I still have yet to finish um, phase one of Kakonia, but I, I, I think I'm getting close to the end is what I'm trying to say. So if this is something that I'm supposed to know, then supposed to understand rather, then I will soon, I believe. But yeah, otherwise I just liked this episode. Yeah, um, and I'm glad that we're finally caught up to where we were at the end of Nekodamashi. It took, like, more, like, about the runtime of a second, of, like, what episode did Nekodamashi end at and go? Like, 16 or something? And so far, we've had, like, 20 episodes to catch back up to it, so. Yeah, if you include Satoko Washi, which I am, personally, so. Yeah, we're finally caught up, and we have two episodes to end this I don't think it's going to end in two episodes. It'll either be another cliffhanger and we'll get a third season, or we're going to get more episodes, or it's going to set up to a bigger multiverse thing and Higurashi Go slash Sotsu will be done, but it'll tie into Umaneko and Kakoni and shit, because I feel like there's too many uh, threads to, to tie up in two episodes. So, yeah. But... Something interesting I noticed in this episode, in particular, was Satoko's behavior during the Nekodamashi fragment where she injected Keiichi. I might just be reading too much into this since she also did this in the Kimiyoshi fragment, but Satoko didn't kill Keiichi before talking to Rika and then killing herself, which is something she's done in every other fragment aside from, again, the Kimiyoshi one. So why didn't she do it in this Keiichi one? Hell, why didn't she do it in the Kimiyoshi one? If Satoko still has some empathy left remaining for her friends and the village, then naturally she's gonna want to end these tragedies before they continue. Because by all means, in Wata Damashi slash Wata Akashi, Satoko really didn't have a reason to kill Mion before killing herself. All she needed was confirmation that Rika is dead. So she didn't really have to kill Mion, she just did. Otherwise, uh, as well, this is the same with Oishi in Tatari Damashi slash Tatari Akashi, arguably, because, uh, Satoko's good enough with a gun at this point to shoot Rika's corpse before killing herself. Of course, her shooting Rika's corpse could, you know, trigger Oishi into shooting Satoko, but we can't really know. Uh, straight up, she didn't exactly have an immediate reason to kill Oishi, since by all means she should have believed that Rika was dead, but she shot her corpse there, but she did it in fucking Nekodamashi. I guess maybe she's just like, oh, Keiichi's good with a baseball bat, he just one-shot Rena, so he's obviously gonna one-shot a seven-year-old girl, or ten, I, I think she's supposed to be ten, doesn't fucking matter. Regardless, it's a little strange. So the only reason that I can think of is that she truly just did not think either, sorry, the only reason I can think of is either that she truly did not think that it was necessary to kill Kimiyoshi and Keiichi in these fragments, and to be fair, it wasn't at all, but that, or she truly does still have some empathy which is why she left those two in particular alive. Because she killed Mion and Wata Akashi, she killed Oishi in Tatari Akashi, Akasaka killed himself, um, she killed Akane, and 
and then there's Kimiyoshi and Keiichi. Rena got killed by Keiichi and Oni Akashi. So there's not really many to choose from. She killed Mio Noishi and uh, fucking bleh, Akane, that's her name. But I feel like this means, potentially, that there's nothing in Satoko still that makes her hate Kimiyoshi or Keiichi. Because neither screamed at her or tried to kill her in this fragment or previous ones, like Akane did, Oishi threatened to, Mion threatened to. So, perhaps it's because she just didn't want to kill them, because she sees them as her true, f as true family members of hers? Because Kimiyoshi is her guardian, and she sees Keiichi as a brother, kind of. Since this is Matsuri Bayashi Satoko and not Tatari Garoshi or Mina Garoshi Satoko. But yes, that does beg the question of why then she would kill Rika in that last Nekonobashi Massacre fragment and also indirectly all the other times. So to that I say, she's not exactly happy with Rika. I don't have an amazing answer here. I feel like I am just reading too much into it. But maybe there's something there. I don't fucking know. But that's all I really have to say. So, out of spoiler time. Welcome back, guys. I have finished reading the spoilers. So now, let's go to fragment 31, uh, pen work. 31 out of 50. I don't know which one is next. Um, this one. Gotta be, right? Because we have the bottle of wine, we have Tomatake's Promise, and the draft. So, a roll of a one. Yes. A roll of a one. It happened so suddenly. Uncle Koizumi passed away. Oh, okay. Koizumi's dead. <laughs> well, I already know what this fragment is. Koizumi's death. I never heard he was ill or wasn't feeling well. His chest started to hurt suddenly, and he couldn't sleep. He called an ambulance for the first time in his life because he didn't think he could endure the pain. He was taken into emergency care, but he didn't live to see mourning. It was an acute myocardial infarction, okay? But maybe it was the best possible way to go. Instead of being in bed for many years, slowly dilapidating and withering away, he was healthy until his death, so I think he must have lived a wonderful life. But still, it was too sudden. I wish I had called him Uncle more. It's too late, though. Uncle Koizumi would never smile at me again with his wrinkly old face, no matter how many times I called for him. He was my guardian until now. He always looked after me, making sure my efforts received proper recognition. Maybe he only did that because he couldn't help my grandfather when he was alive. But still, he was an important person to me. He wasn't just my political backing, but I didn't realize that when he was alive. I only thought of using his power for my own agenda, but after he died, I realized. Uncle Koizumi was my grandpa too. He provided the warmth and protection that I longed for from my own grandfather. At his funeral, I shed tears that I thought I had forgot how to. Uncle. Thank you for everything. I should have called you Uncle Moore, huh? Hmm. No matter how many times I called to him, he would never reply. What can I do for him at this- What I can do for him at this point is complete my research. I must accomplish my goal for his sake. When my grandfather's research is finally acknowledged, Uncle Koizumi's name will be known once again for being the sole supporter of his endeavor. I believe that's the best way to repay him for everything he has done. I vow to devote myself to my work even more from this day on. But, unfortunately, hardships and sadness tend to come together. It was like the tailwind that blew steadily until today suddenly became a headwind. The wind shifted far too suddenly. So strong, so cold. So sad. What? What are you talking about, Jiro-san? 
Well, you know that Koizumi-sensei was the main political sponsor for the Irie Institute, right? He had trouble getting approval from the related agencies, but Koizumi-sensei used his political way to force it through. After all, he was one of the key figures in the post-war restoration, accomplishing tremendous deeds in the medical industry. He held a huge influence in politics and industry. So now that Koizumi-sensei is gone, the way he did things won't work any longer? So far, it's only a rumor, so I don't know for sure. But I heard they're going to reconsider the budget allocated for the project. Are you saying the Irie Institute will be closed down? No, I haven't heard anything about them reconsidering the Institute. But since Koizumi-sensei's death, the rumors say that there's a great deal of confusion among the old guard and their factions as well as the civil strife within the party around finding his successor. Seems the opposing factions are gaining influence in the human resources of our client. So they may begin to dig deep into the holy treasure chest that the Koizumi faction held to fund their project. Of course, this is all too complicated for me to explain that well, and besides, these might just be rumors. Jiro-san kept saying they were rumors, but that told me the wind's direction has changed. Or maybe, Jiro-san already knows everything, and is simply trying to warn me about it. And then, at our next routine audit, Jiro-san made it clear with his own mouth. High-ranking government officials who had never came here before attended the routine audit along with Jiro-san. Just by seeing those faces, I can tell the turning point is approaching. As you know, the Alphabet Project was created to strengthen post-war Japan's presence in the world with the view of developing deterrent weaponry. Weaponry. How did... How did I right-click by left-clicking? What? However, the 21st century is now just around the corner. In this day and age, we must put the past behind us and start looking forward to a new world. He meant exactly what he said. Japan has already put the past behind, and it's cutting off his its ties to the ghosts that wish to resurrect the militaristic might of the pre-war era. It's been 40 years since the end of the war, and we've contributed to the world in various peaceful ways. We have a strong alliance with the United States, and our nation has established its position in world affairs well enough. We have kept our promise to forever renounce war and nuclear weapons, and we are known as a nation of peace. In this coming century, our presence and influence will grow even larger. The Alphabet Project, the main sponsor of the Erie Institute, are a group of people who want to develop a weapon that would act as a deterrent to the nuclear weapons which Japan is forbidden to own. So they've come to the Erie Institute, one of its branch organizations, to tell us Japan has now renounced nuclear arms. So the Irie Institute will be facing a strong, cold headwind from now on. The role of the die that came up with one on that stormy day has reappeared. I won't let the result of the die affect me. The power of my will won't be beaten by some god's roll of the dice. Therefore, we are going to restructure the Alphabet Project to one that's more suitable for the day and age. This new Alphabet Project will be tasked with figuring out the best way for this country to achieve a larger presence in world affairs, not through militaristic means, but through peaceful measures like international trade and economic development. All of the people who hold tremendous influence in the politics and economy of Japan were born before the war, so naturally they want to regain the glory of pre-war Japan. The very idea that we can win next time if we research the new bomb that defeated us is itself a specter of the war. Now, everyone already realized that. It was just that no one could speak out against the grandstanding elders they owed their gratitude towards. Soon, the old will wither away, and the new generation will take control. Uncle Koizumi was, in a way, the last remaining pillar for the old generation. His death is a chance for the new generation to step in. The things they can argue openly are now being discussed. They've pointed out that from the beginning, the Alphabet Project was created for the personal satisfaction of a small group of people, and it sucked money out of the treasury. And so, the new generation of politicians have taken over from the old. Therefore, 
Everything the Alphabet Project was sponsoring will have to be re-reviewed. Of course, the Area Institute is one of those subsidiaries. We hope that you'll understand and respond amicably. I understand. We can't do research without our sponsors, after all. We'll give you our full cooperation. Irei responded appropriately, but he's obviously bewildered. The best equipment and staff are being provided to the Irei Institute. In other words, our research requires a huge amount of money. For those with no interest in Hinamizawa Syndrome, they probably won't be able to understand why that much money is being put into the research of disgusting parasites. If they're simply going to revise our budget, that would be some. Eh, that would be fine. We were receiving more than enough money. That would naturally be adjusted. It hurts, but we can endure. That's what I thought. But if just enduring it was enough, it wouldn't be a one on the die. So even in that sense, this is definitely a roll of a die coming up as one. Anyway, the new board of directors was inaugurated back in April, and they've outlined their new policies for all projects. For more details, please look through the papers I'll be handing out. His papers were none passed around. He started to go over the details, but I read through quickly so I could learn about their stupid decisions first. The Irie Institute has made great headway in uncovering the mystery of the Hinamizawa Syndrome, as well as creating a cure for the disease. The Board of Directors is extremely pleased. We recognize this is due to the unceasing efforts of Director Irie and all the staff of the Irie Institute. Thank you. Even while he received their congratulations, a tense atmosphere surrounded me and Irie. It's customary to start the conversation in the opposite way you're planning to take it before delving into your main point to convey. If the main issue is something good, then start with something bad. Or vice versa. The Uriya Institute had two main intentions. One was to study the disease and hopefully find a cure. The other was to research the possibility of utilizing the disease for military applications. The new board of directors has decided to put a stop to the latter immediately. In this day and age, researching biological weapons is an Achilles heel for Japan. The Irie Institute must cease all related research and destroy any results. I understand. I will comply. Irie replied with that immediately. Irie was assertive about finding a cure but was never even remotely interested in researching the disease's use for military purposes. So I'm sure he has no qualms about concurring with such demands. But I don't agree. Because our research will be more limited if we're just trying to find a cure. To me, finding that cure is simply a byproduct of my larger goal of discovering everything about the syndrome. Also regarding the Irie Institution, we have decided to have you wrap up your work within the next three years. Your budget will decrease gradually as well. Wait, please. We've only recently figured out anything about the syndrome, and there's more we have to learn in order to create a better cure. We're making progress, but I can't guarantee we'll come up with a complete cure within three years. It's the understanding of the board that the Irie Institute has already completed enough research to develop a cure. The Irie Institute has already completed the C117 vaccine, and has a great deal of clinical data. No, it's not even close to being completed! It's only a prototype, and we're far from being able to see a cure for all the villagers! Debating the end of our research at this stage can only be described as absolutely, positively reckless! I'm surprised that Irie objected. Thanks to him, I didn't have to say anything. But if Irie hadn't objected, I'm sure I would have shrieked in protest. In other words, the Irie Institute is not yet capable of curing all the people who are infected or to fully eradicate the syndrome. Is that correct? Yes, of course. Of course, curing all the villagers and eradicating the syndrome will be possible in the future, and that's our ultimate goal. But I need more time and, of course, funding to do that. Our job is to investigate find a practice that works, and establish it as a product. This isn't a job where you can follow a blueprint to create something with certainty in a set time frame. 
so we hope that you avoid following that misconception. I guess Irie speaks out when he needs to. And what he's saying is absolutely right. Research isn't something guaranteed to produce results with money and time. But I disagree with some of the things he said. He's objecting about the time and money, but he's basically agreeing to limit our research only towards finding a cure for Hinamizawa Syndrome. That won't do. We won't unravel any mysteries that way. At that rate, the discovery of the Hinamizawa Syndrome won't be recognized as my grandfather's great achievement. I see. I think I see your point. Our main purpose here is to dispose of the fact that this research was conducted for military purposes. So we must forever hide the fact that the, that research was conducted on the strange disease called Hinamizawa Syndrome, as well as hide its existence. If you can eradicate the disease without anyone ever learning about it, then we will give you the time and funding you require. But we'll discuss more about that later. Is that acceptable? Yes, I have no problem with that. Then please submit a plan and a budget proposal for eradicating the syndrome in secrecy. We'll do our best on our part to approve your proposal. Thank you. I'll work on it immediately. Please don't misunderstand that it's our intention to halt that research immediately. We want to see the best possible outcome for your work. Please understand that. Yes, of course. I understand. While I was listening to their conversation, I was struck dumbfounded with something they said. Eradicating the syndrome in secrecy. In other words, it would be as though Hinamizawa syndrome never existed. So my grandfather's name will never be revered by anyone. The sound of rustling papers and hushed proceedings filled the meeting room, but I only heard the ticking clock as I clutched my sweating palms. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, some of these fragments I actually do not remember. <laughs> I think it was established before that Koizumi dies. But... Oh well, I... Well, I guess I can exit. I do need to save. But I didn't fully intend to do that. Alright. So was that just Koizumi's death? We don't have the death of the ant. We don't have the bat. We, we do have that, so we can do that. Completion of... Hmm? Maybe? Well, he said it's a prototype. So I'm just gonna say completion of C117 question mark. Is there anything else? No, 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 and then all that, so. Yeah, so we can definitely though do number 32, disappointment. This app. Point meant. Maybe we should wrap up for now. I don't think you're in the mood today. Huh? Uh, that's not true. Sorry if I gave you that impression. Takano-san has been looking through the viewfinder, but I haven't seen her push the shutter at all. While she came along, I don't think she's in the mood for bird watching. Takano-san has been depressed ever since the announcement of the new policies at the board meeting the other day. That's understandable. The Irie Institute was created by her in the first place. It was created so that she can devote her life to researching Hinamizawa Syndrome. For all that to be tossed aside while being asked to wrap up work within a few years, of course she's depressed. Besides, she can't even fully spend the rest of the time left on research. The funding was being cut in stages, and by the end they'll barely be able to finish closing up, let alone research anything. I heard that she's the granddaughter of the late Dr. Takano. Her determination to finish her grandfather's research is what kept her going until today. Since everything has been going so smoothly until recently, this sudden change in the wind's direction must have been a total shock. The shift in people pulling the strings must be pretty serious. The board of directors was completely changed out. And she heard that people and projects influenced by the Koizumi faction were being restructured to set an example. 
the wind's new direction seems likely to remain for a long time. It's highly unlikely that the Koizumi faction will come back into power, so no matter what we say, it's almost impossible to expect the same kind of support from them. Isn't there something we can do? Takano-san muttered. Unfortunately, there isn't. There's nothing anybody can do. At first, the board talked about halting the research immediately, but after lots of convincing, they finally agreed to make it a gradual suspension over a few years. The people who helped us when the Irei Institute was first created are the ones who managed that. <laughs> I see. Well, it looks like the worst case scenario, it's actually somebody else's hard earned victory, huh? Three years was the best they could do. I tried, you know. I used your data to try and explain to the board how important this research is. Only three more years, huh? Maybe Takano-san doesn't understand how hard I tried to convince them. Because what she just said tells me the length of time left doesn't really matter to her. The important thing is that her research is being stopped. The fact is that I couldn't meet her expectations and made her feel disappointed. As a man, it kind of hurts. The best I can do at this point is route as much funding as possible towards the research, so that you can work to your heart's content for the few years we have left. Sorry, I can't do anything else. That's okay. If that's the best you can do, then I'm very happy. Her words hurt me. I wish she'd chosen different ones, but I think that would be asking too much from someone so heartbroken. I must be understanding of her pain at a time like this. Besides, I know how close she was to the deceased Koizumi-sensei. She even called him uncle. To her, his death is not just the start of a coup, or a change in direction. She lost the person who was always looking after her. No matter how hard she pushed herself to act villainous, she wasn't supposed to be part of this world. She was just an ordinary woman. But she was intrigued by Hinamizawa Syndrome. She had to find help from someone who had more power than her to be able to continue research on it. The dark side of the world, the world she should never have gotten involved in, extended its hands out to her. She was left all by herself in that world, and she's still trying to put on a brave face. I'm sure Takano-san thinks I'm unreliable. Realistically, I'm not the kind of person who can meet her expectations, nor do I have the power to. The least I can do for her is stay sincere and remain her ally until the very end. Since she had so much room to act, it's harder for her to determine what actions to take when she's con cornered. I wanted to believe she wouldn't, but I'm concerned that she might do something drastic eventually. I hope I can be of help to her in that very final moment before she makes her move. But I can't even gain enough trust from her to do that. How pitiful and pathetic. Of course, part of it is, as a man, I want her to rely on me. But that's not really yet. She's been abandoned in this world and is all alone, so someone has to be her ally. And if I'm the only one who knows about that, then being her ally is my job. I know her too well, so I know that she'll never ask for help. Even if she says it's unnecessary, Someone has to be with her. I know that. I don't really think I'm suited for that job. I'm sure that there are many reliable people out there who are more appropriate for the position than me. But I can't let her be alone until that person appears. Takano-san, I know I'm pathetic and unreliable. Mm hmm? What's this all of a sudden? What is it, Jiro-san? But I think I can be of help to you. So... Thank you, but I don't believe that talking to people helps you feel better. Sorry. Though, I'm happy to hear that you're concerned. I really am. Okay. That's fine. I'll always be on your side. Please believe that, okay? Of course I will. If you think of a good idea to convince the board, please let me know, okay? Sure, I'll do my best. Why is it? I know she's such a strong person, and there's nothing someone like me can do for her. But, somehow, I feel like she needs help and support right now. 
She looks as tough as ever. But only I, who has been taking pictures of her all this time, can tell. A viewfinder, after all, is also a window to look into someone's heart. But if I say something like that, she'll tease me again, so I won't. Anyway, I never thought she needed support more strongly than I do right now. Oh wow, that was a short one. Or it felt short. Alright, I do not know <laughs> what this one could be. But it had to get done eventually anyway, so maybe it's just the end of a quote-unquote root. Which means I have a different one that I need to do. Which could mean that we do have completion of C117 after all. But if I go all the way back, we definitely don't have that, so no. We definitely don't have that, so no. Maybe, like I said. Um, no and no. No and no. Yes and no. No and yes. Yes and no. Uh, possibly and no. Uh, no and no. So, since that's the case, that must mean... Would this actually be the first page we complete? One's not done, two's not done, three's not done, four's not done, five, six, and seven haven't been touched. That would mean this is the first one that we complete. This page. Interesting. Uh, 33. Deja vu? Yes, okay, we can do this then. Deja vu, I think I've been in this place before. Hey, Nakagawa-kun! Long time no see! Still at it lately? You know that. <laughs> uh, no, no, not at all. It's no fun getting old. You've gotta concentrate when you work with clay. If you put it off for a long time, your senses get dull, and there's no point! Sensei, allow me to introduce someone. This is Major Takano. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for taking time to meet with me today. I truly appreciate it. I really didn't make time for you, actually. I was told that I could have some good raw sea urchins. Oh, sea urchins were said? Hmm. Sea urchins are good for you, did you know? Rich in vitamin A, and they are good for your skin. Women like sea urchins, right? <laughs> It is true that sea urchins are rich in vitamin A. Okay, so we have sea urchins and vitamin A here. Yay. I'm just going to write C so I remember. But compared to spinach, it's not anything that's worth making a fuss about. Well, none of that matters right now. He just seemed like an unpleasant man, so I wanted to criticize him. These men are the, are the directors of the Alphabet Project who control the funding for the Erie Institute. They are also people who are in the position of being able to offer their opinions to those directors. To put it in a simpler way, they are the new owners of the Irie Institute. Although not as much as Uncle Koizumi was, they are also leaders and influencers in various fields. I have to be very careful not to upset them. And therefore, there's no way I would have the ability to call them in. By using the influence that the Koizumi faction once had, I finally managed to get this chance. Uncle Koizumi, who gave me his full support and made everything go my way, is not here anymore. And there's a fly that is here. Go away, bitch! I'm on my own from this point on, and I will open up a path. But this stage just doesn't belong to me today. I can't let the people who offered me this chance lose face, so I have to wait patiently until it's my turn. My primary objective today is to explain what a prominent research subject the Hinamizawa Syndrome is, and acquire an indefinite extension for our research. They only ever think about money, so they aren't even realizing the hidden potential of Hinamizawa Syndrome. They don't recognize that it's worth spending a lot of money on. This is not mere research on the existence of an unknown parasite, but something that may overthrow the basic foundations of anthropology. A Nobel Prize wouldn't even be enough. It won't be easy trying to explain all that to men who know nothing about any of it, but I have to. That's why I spent many hours making these straightforward support documents. Sometimes, we make documents confusing on purpose because we don't like dealing with uneducated people, but this time it's different. I can't look down at them, and must sincerely try to make them understand. 
The accessible support documents are there in a huge pile. It feels like we're wasting time eating traditional Japanese food in such a relaxed mood. I want to get to the point and explain to them in detail so they can understand. But there is the saying, luck lies in the last helping. I have to be patient right now. Hmm. To be frank, I thought the alphabet project we've seen wasn't that good. In the end, it's been nothing but a sandbox for the old men with their heads still stuck in the Pacific War. Nothing but a sandbox for those old men to craft their dreams of Imperial Japan's revival with money that isn't theirs. Do you know how much public funding was wasted on those delusions? From what I've heard, there are already prosecutors poking people like Okuno-sensei and trying to pin embezzlement on the old board of directors. <laughs> That's what you get for trying to suck up to those old men. Of course, none of it can be made public. So I guess they'll be held responsible or demoted in another form. This is what the country gets for letting these ghosts of the war run around freely all this time. Boy, these grilled sea urchins are fantastic! <laughs> well, this is harsh. I realize it's extremely difficult to ask this of you all when you feel that way, but... But I have a moment of your time. Uh, you're from the Area Institute, aren't you? You're researching some kind of local disease in Nagano or Gifu, right? Uh, what's going on down there? The board has decided to halt the research for military applications. The research project itself is to wrap up within three years as well. Oh, no, sorry, that's still being discussed. Anyhow, our research is scheduled to be shut down within a few years. Ah, yes, I remember now! The Urie Institute had a bad reputation even among the old board of directors. After all, it sucked up huge funds with barely any inspections. I don't know why, but someone high up kept pushing it for some reason. Because of that, nobody could really say anything about it, and it was left alone. But you know, that guy loved to flirt around with women. So maybe that had something to do with it. <laughs> Is he implying that I slept with Uncle Koizumi? Rude. He's insulting both of us. But I held my anger in. I can't let myself be bothered by something like this. Anyway, today, I would like to explain to you the details of our Institute's research and ask you to reconsider your decision. I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to attend this meeting today. Oh, I guess they don't give out free sea urchins for nothing, huh? <laughs> ah, my throat. Motherfucker, work. I explained to them how much the Hinamizawa syndrome mattered while being very careful not to go too fast. I tried to let them know that the syndrome's potential is not limited to small things like military applications, but is much more meaningful than that. It may explain ideology and religion. It may even shake the very definition of a human being. I took my time to explain as slowly and queerly as possible. I'm not confident that all of it had gotten through to those boorish men, but I'm happy if they understood even just a part of it. As long as they understand how much of a magnificent discovery Hinamizawa Syndrome really is. Excuse me, I did not fucking right click. Thank you, Major. Hmm, I see. Hmm. We would like to discuss among ourselves, so could you please excuse yourself? Yes. Thank you. Obviously, they can't discuss in front of me. I left the, all the documents with them. All I could do now is hope they viewed them favorably. I left the room and closed the sliding door. The room next door is a preparation room, so I was to head there. But I stopped. I shouldn't have done it, but I tried to listen in through the sliding door. Ah, fly, go away. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I feel sorry for everyone on the previous board of directors. I know how you feel. <laughs> Koizumi-sensei pushed us so strongly. I met him once before, when he became founding director of XX Pharmaceuticals. He seemed like a very intelligent person to me. Hmm. Guess you can't just win it. Just can't win against age. Makes you realize how important it is for humans to know when to pull out. 
but it is a fact that this very rare disease called Hinamizawa Syndrome really exists. So not everything is a delusion. I hear the Urie Institute has already succeeded in identifying the disease and developing a treatment. Isn't that enough? In modern Japan, we have to be careful with things that might make neighboring countries nervous. And military-related issues are the most sensitive ones. So at the very least, we must erase the fact that research for military purposes has been going on for the past few years immediately. Is that separate from simply discontinuing the military research then? Yes. Even if we stopped it immediately, the fact that this Hinamizawa syndrome was being researched in order to create a biological weapon remains. We should hide that fact no matter what purpose the research ends up being used for. If possible, it would be best if Hinamizawa syndrome just disappears. That's true. If the disease remains, then sooner or later, someone will become curious about it and dig up the hole we filled. I think we should follow the decision of the board of directors. And as soon as the Uriya Institute eradicates this disease, we should have them destroy all evidence of their work before disbanding. Hmm. I guess that's for the best. It's not even a matter of a Nobel Prize, it's just useless for post-war Japan. Besides, this disease has existed for hundreds of years, right? We made it this far without any problems. From the start, I thought this amounted to a little more than just poking around in the bushes. Me too. I don't doubt the existence of the syndrome, but Dr. Takano, who discovered the disease, is exaggerating more than a little. He had quite a unique interpretation of things. First of all, I've never even heard of a parasite that's capable of controlling people's thoughts. It's just too much. If we tried to explain religions with this, then Buddha, Christ, all those people would be... What was it again? Queen carriers? If we tried exposing something like this, we'd be attacked by every nation on the planet! Religion is pretty scary nowadays. <laughs> if there are parasites that live in animal brains, then I guess we can say there are parasites that live in human brains, too. But for them to control human thoughts? <laughs> That's a bit too unique, you know? As I peeked through the gap in the sliding door, I became trapped within an unbelievable sense of deja vu. Oh, yeah. This is my first time experiencing this, but it doesn't feel that way. I don't know why, but the memory is so sad and so painful. Huh? Huh? Why, tears? Before I realized it, I saw a very nostalgic carpeted room on the other side of the sliding door instead of a room covered in tatami mats. The room is filled with the smell of dust mixed in with the smell of some evaporated medicine but it's very soothing to me just the same. And there is my grandfather. His article that he poured his heart into was made a mockery of, yet he wasn't even allowed to cry. This isn't a delusion, because within the documents I left with those men, there are a lot of references to the article my grandfather wrote. So I'm not surprised for my grandfather to be standing right there explaining it to them himself. Together with my tears from seeing the sight of my beloved grandfather, I watched these men insult and belittle his masterpiece. I've seen this sight before, and the sight should have ended there. But why is it repeating before my eyes? I can only blankly peek through the sliding door at this strange world where reality and illusion overlap. The major is a little strange. And Koizumi-sensei, who believed in something as ridiculous as this, is a little strange, too. But the strangest of all is the person who wrote this article in the first place. It blends together expectations and delusions. It looks more like fiction than a thesis. I think this will be a big hit once it gets published, you know? You're absolutely right! I have a friend who's the head of a publishing company. I better love this! <laughs> this is not a laughing matter, gentlemen. Huge amount of money was poured into this over the past few years. The worst thing is that the equipment used to gas the villagers in case of an emergency has already been procured. Our people must never learn about this. For such a plan to exist is scary enough, but if people find out about this equipment, the whole country will turn against us. On top of that, the cost to maintain this equipment is enormous! You don't really think it's being maintained, do you? Surely this whole project is some kind of money laundering scheme. What'd they say, anyway? 
If one girl dies, the whole village will go crazy at once. What kind of comic book is this? Exactly. Someone actually believes such a childish story and put a huge amount of money into it. Now that's crazy. What's truly ridiculous is that someone actually took these documents seriously. As he said that, he placed the documents down with an exaggerated gesture. Actually, I should say he slammed them down. Because the papers ended up scattered all over the floor. You're too right. <laughs> ah, excuse me, I need to use the bathroom. One of the men stood up and stepped on the papers. And they weren't the papers on the tatami mats, but the ones on the carpet. Right there, I can see my grandfather filled with heart-rending sadness. Yet he can't let it show on his face. Grandfather's expression didn't change. Yet it seemed distorted to me. I could see the walls of my grandfather's study crumpling and twisting behind him. I jumped into the room. I grabbed onto the old man's legs. I don't hate him. No, it's not whether I hate him or not. Sure, I hate him, but that's not a... I just can't forgive the feet stepping on my grandfather's article. Don't! Don't step on them! My grandpa wrote these! Please, don't step on them! Uh, oh, sorry. Those feet are still stepping on the papers. I tried to make them move. But they won't even budge, as though they've grown roots. So I begged as I grabbed onto his legs. I tried to pull the papers from under his feet, but I can't move his feet. I can't pull out the papers. Don't step on them! Don't step on them! My grandpa's... Don't... Don't step on them. My sobbing echoed in that silent room. Just like it did back then. Damn. I'm not gonna lie. That was insanely well written. That was actually really fucking good. That was really good. As a, write, as a creative writing major, I indeed approve. <laughs> but no shit, like, that actually feels like something that would be used in a class as an example of, like, I don't know, well, what kind of narrative device would you even call that, like, I don't know, a flashback metaphor, I guess? A parallel? Yeah. Okay, so we have sea urchins and vitamin A now. Sea urchins and vitamin A. Was that all that was here, though? The teddy bear moral support is probably something for Satoshi. Maybe that's the end of it? Like, an invitation to an end. Yeah. Yeah, that would be it. So, we reached the end of a line, which means something else we can do then? What would we be able to do? That's confusing. It's part-time job and footsteps. Huh. Me confusion. Do I do one more? Or do I end it? Because I feel like thematically, that's a good ending. Like, we only did three fragments, but we're really getting close to the end now. Um, because if I can do math, that means we only have 17 left. Which, this one, we'll probably need this one for. I don't know where the bat would be. Probably the footsteps one, right? This one? If I had to guess. Notice of leave of absence. Which might have the awareness of sins? How can we have the awareness of sins? But, we, but no, footsteps would be this, so this would be the bat? Which means we would need the awareness from where? We probably do have the forgiveness of renaissance, actually, don't we? I feel like we probably do. Yeah, yeah, I, I wrote that down. We have Rena's forgiveness.
which means we might be able to do this one. This is the best one I can think of, but I don't think we have Satoshi's awareness, do we? Because if we did, we could do this. And we definitely can't do this, because Keiichi hasn't shown up. And this one has to be something with uh, Satoshi buying the bear. And then the game board, all these we can't do yet, so. Yeah, I guess in that case, I will end this episode here. I imagine this one has to be next. It's gotta be. Gotta be, right? Or maybe that... Uh, no, what would it be? Whatever. We'll, we'll try random shit next episode and see what works so yeah <laughs> that's gonna be it for this episode guys if you liked it then be sure to press the like button and if you didn't like it then fuck you too remember to subscribe follow me on twitter and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff and as always my name is godzi and i will see you all next time Goodbye! Yeah.